Hello ladies and gents! Finally it's tank review time once again, and today's subject is none other than the infamous Death Toaster, aka the mighty Flagbus, one of the German non turreted tank destroyers at tier 5. Now if you got not one, but two nicknames, that means there is something truly special under that armor, and oh my god, it so is! Now I did promise this review quite a while ago on stream, Sorry it took so long to make it happen. I was really looking forward to it myself as well though, as I really did like this machine by the end. Not to say that it would have been love at first sight, it can be super unforgiving, as we will see in a second. Now if you are not interested in indulging yourself with a ton of stats, you can jump straight ahead to the Ace Tanker High Caliber and Top Gun gameplay right now. Just hit that timestamp in the description below. And as for everyone else, let's warm up a little bit by looking at the history of this unique German tank destroyer. And unique is definitely right, as there were only three prototypes ever built. The concept was to place a modified 88mm gun on an adjusted Panzer IV chassis, and works already began on it by 1941. The widely used Panzer IV may have been the basis of this machine, but it got a rather modern coating. The tall side plates, giving it the trademark toaster look, could actually be lowered to allow the gun a 360 degree traverse. While the main idea was to use the Panzerau Selbstfahrtlafet 4C as a mobile anti aircraft vehicle, also using it as a tank destroyer was not an idea from the devil, as anti aircraft guns were used regularly in anti tank rows as well as the battle required it. As the war raged on, however, the requirements were constantly changing. And in the end, this weapon never entered mass production stage. Oh, and by the way, if you want to do a little research on your own, you might also want to search for Versuchsflakwagen, which also refers to the same vehicle. Right then, so what's the flag bus all about? Well, let's just say that it's 88mm of pure fun. That top gun gives you close to unparalleled stopping power in your tier. To put things into perspective, with 194mm you will have 40-50mm better penetration than most of your rivals at tier 5, and with 240 average damage, you can slap the enemies about twice as hard than most of your opposition. And no, this is not one of those cases when the gun handling destroys it all. Accuracy at 0.32m is fantastic, aim time at 2.3 seconds is rather nice. Rate of fire at 8 rounds a minute, giving you a 7.5 second reload time is actually really good for such a gun. And the good news are still not done. The, for tank destroyers at least ever so important gun arc, is really good as well with 48 degrees, allowing you to change targets without breaking your camo or resetting your binoculars. It's really only the gun traversed at 26 degrees per second that's more mediocre, but apart from this, this is really a top of its class of a gun, with one of the best DPM at tier 5. Oh right, this is just too good to be true, isn't it? Everything else about this machine is totally crap, I assume. Well, not entirely. Ok, the armor, or better to say the lack of it, is exactly as bad as you would expect it to be. On paper you have 20mm on the front and 14 on the sides and rear, but those are actually maximum values only. On most places you will only have 10mm of armor, and even shooting your tracks won't require more than 34mm of penetration to go through. Really, for all intents and purposes you have to drive this vehicle as it would have zero armor, which is actually closer to the truth. The only way you can avoid taking damage is if someone shoots your gun, otherwise literally everything will go through, including any type of HE. Oh yes, artillery loves shooting at these machines, even low tier ones are guaranteed a penetrating hit, especially as you are also an open top vehicle, and they will get mostly a one shot kill on you. As you are so dangerous and so easy to kill, you just have to expect becoming public enemy number one as soon as you get spotted. It's just the way it is, so deal with it. Now of course this is not being helped by the fact that you are a massive target as well. Apart from the non-protection, however, mobility is very very good once again. 
you can really shift with this thing across the battlefield with a top speed of 60 km per hour and that 16 horsepower per ton power to weight ratio doesn't feel to be too cumbersome either. Ultraverse is top notch as well with 48 degrees per second, so be careful as you might get surprised if you try to circle this thing. View range is once again one of the better ones with 380 meters and signal range is solid at 550 meters. So then, the flag bus is the archetype of a one-trick pony. It does only one thing, but it does it really, really well. It totally shreds up everything in front of it from a stealthy position and dies horribly and quickly when it gets spotted. The key to success with it is to first of all learn the maps, knowing where the best sniper locations are, and secondly, remembering to retreat to the next bush using your speed as soon as you feel your location is about to get compromised. Of course, equipment and crew skills should support the same playstyle as well. Apart from the mandatory gun rumor, I highly suggest binoculars and a camo net. While I myself was using a gun laying drive instead of a net, this is more due to my fixation of a super low aiming time and a camo net will probably benefit you more. Crew skill wise, you also should go first for camo, followed by brothers in arms and of course six cents to give you a chance if you still get spotted. If you have all of this, you will have a ton of great games in this machine, guaranteed. But you don't have to believe me just like that. Come and see for yourself. Alright, so here we are on Fiery Salient, which is a version of the famous Prohorovka map. Now we are definitely in a very, very nice matchup for the flag bus. We are top tier and that literally means that there is absolutely nothing on the enemy team that could be a problem for our standard AP rounds. That over 190mm of penetration will shred up those KV-1S's, T1 heavies and T14's even from the front. Now, beginning of the match, we have to be very careful with the positioning of the flag bus. We have to stay back and either rely on camouflage in the most optimal case or we do have to rely on pure distance to remain hidden. Now looking at the um, distribution I absolutely see no reason to go to the usual tank destroyer camping positions in the 2 zone at the end of that road. There are more than enough vehicles there already. And there is a very very small force here on the other side. So I opted to stay here on the top of the tracks which is also a very very usual position for tank destroyers. Now this is pretty much in the open here so I have to be careful. If anyone gets close to me I will have to put the pedal to the metal very quickly. And there goes the first victim. As I will for sure be targeted by all of the artilleries on the enemy team. And there are two of them. And I can guarantee you that they would like to have a nice juicy bite out of me. Now the good thing about this position is that, um, well A, in this tier we can actually be uh, pretty sure that a lot of the enemies just won't have the um, basically the view distance to spot us. While we, with our binoculars, have over 400 meters spotting range, which gives us a distinct advantage. The other good thing is that um, I can support both flanks here. I can support that lone KV-1S working its way slowly towards the hill, and I can also support the guys camping the uh, road on the other side of the map, which I have to admit I don't have great faith in them either. So this position gives me the best control of the map and I fully expected to be required to be carried this as um, while XVM is broken in this replay we had two very very red teams going up against each other which meant a lot of camping. Now you can see the actual reload of 7.5 seconds it's the base reload by the way is really really comfortable with such a big gun and 
it took us only 3 shots to bring that T1 heavy from 100% half down to 0. And that very very bouncy T14 was also destroyed in a matter of shots. His armor might be bouncy, but not against the N88mm flag gun. So, so far we didn't really do anything amazing, but we are already over a thousand damage, and that's what we know of. I think that uh, other shot might have gone in as well. And we already secured four kills. Actually, four of the five kills of our team. Still, everybody is really busy camping in the back, and we just can't afford to go forward. There are way too many enemy tanks still alive, and this could be trouble. We really need to take this guy out as quick as possible, otherwise we might get spotted, and that's not meaning anything good for the flag bus. Watch if we don't manage to one-shot him. Okay, he is gone. And I'm pretty sure that we have been spotted. And there we go. Panzer 4H. As soon as he sees us, he is turning his turret towards us. And managed to put one shot into us before we can take him down now. This definitely confirms that we have been spotted, so we have to get out of the way, keep maneuvering, at least try to make it a little bit more difficult for the artillery to hit us, because if they do, there is a very real chance that even these lower tier artilleries will one-shot us. Such a fragile open-top vehicle is the wet dream of every single artillery player out there. But, it seems, disaster has been averted, and that enemy flag bus shows us exactly what not to do driving in front of all of those enemy guns, and unfortunately the gun did misbehave itself a little bit here, dunking the shot into the ground. And that enemy, enemy toaster was so quickly taken out that we didn't get to take another punt at him. It's not too bad though. We have now a very comfortable lead. There's still plenty of targets to shoot at. Finally, someone is going forward that M3 Lee seems to have taken his brave pills. But <laughs> it seems I have been I have been speaking a little bit too early. He shits himself and starts to retreat. Fantastic. It seems it will be done to us in the uh, most fragile vehicle to slightly move forward, because this is not bringing us anywhere. Seems the enemy is camping hard as well, so we have to do something. Perfect. Well, truth be told, KV-1S and the AT-2 are slowly, slowly crawling forwards as well, so let's try to get into a position where we can actually support them if they do manage to spot something. Neither of these vehicles are, of course, any good at spotting things, but... It's better than nothing. Now, we know that that VK has been spotted right here up on the ridge not so long ago, and he is most probably still covering on the other side. So we have to be careful. And oh, there goes the VK, and there is also the KV-1S. We take a punt here, but uh, that was a bad shot. And we have to be really careful. We are spotted now, if there is someone on the other side of the tracks, he will get shots into us, and I really, really want to avoid getting shot at by that KV-1S. I can probably handle the VK, at least take one shot from him comfortably, but KV-1S is a different story. Oh, there he is. Sideways on, and we do get shot, taking out our gun, but he still has some of our life left. And as he is spotted and getting shotted by our team, there is no reason to risk it. There we go, threat neutralized. But that means the next one is the VK, 
who seems to be fully focused on us. But he's already getting side shots. And we can give him a very nice welcoming shot. Unfortunately, the M3 Lee, which probably it was the only <laughs> damaging shot he dealt in the entire game, steals the kill. But hey, there isn't really anything like a kill stealing in this game. Well, there is. But then again, I was a one shot kill for the VK as well, so it's better to be safe than sorry. And especially as we get our top gun by blowing up that artillery who was trying to run away. Not today, my friend. Not today. So that means we just need to hoover up the T28, who will be hiding probably somewhere along the road. And our VK and BDR didn't move for the entirety of the game. T40, I don't know what he is expecting to do. Right there in the back either. Oh well. Okay, so there is the T28. Good shot into him. And then the BDR eventually finishes him off. So, this was my ace tanker gameplay in the infamous flag bus. I think the result speaks for itself that 88mm top gun is an absolute beast in its tier and is even respectable in the higher tiers. If you can keep it singing, the damage will pile up really fast. No wonder then that in this rather sweet matchup we were able to get a top gun with 6 kills and a high caliber award with close to 2700 direct damage. It didn't seem awfully difficult to get it, now did it? For hoovering up all this damage, we received 48,000 credits and 1,345 base XP, catapulting us on top of the charts both by damage dealt, kills secured and XP earned as well. During these about 9 minutes, we fired 18 shots in total, 14 of each hit and all of them penetrated as well. This is as expected. Especially in your own tier, you will generally power your way through any opposition with that excellent penetration of yours. At the same time, both hits received did go through our armor, if we can call it that, which is also business as usual. If you are getting hit, you will take damage. It's simple as that. Last but not least, the credit earning potential of this machine is quite nice actually. As you can do a lot of damage quite easily, if you can stay alive that is, you will make a lot of credits. Even with a standard account this would have been a 22,000 credit profit. Right, this was then my quick look at the infamous Death Toaster. I hope you found it useful. If you did, thank you very much for considering giving it a like or sharing it. There is one more video scheduled for this week and it's a good one. Our new epic series will make a return with a really fun 5000 damage run in the T-71 American light tank, so stay tuned for the rest of the week as well. Take care guys, and I look forward to seeing you again in one of the next videos.